Nice, very it's nice. Larry Sanchez, I have the low down here. Um, you've just come from the match. Uh, we were told that the Portuguese were going to walk all over the Irish. They didn't. No, the, um, the Irish did very well, put up a very good performance. I think um, it was a clash of cultures. The Portuguese had some great techniques, and um, I think the passion of the Irish overcame them in the end. How long has it been since you've kicked a ball yourself? Now, now I don't mean that in the managerial sense. I mean in the, in the player sense. In the player sense. I have actually played this season. I did say I was going to come over and not play. I played my last game last season for Swindon against Leeds, and we got beaten 5-0. I thought that'll do me. I won't play anymore. And um, I came over to Ireland not intending to play but um, I was put under some pressure to play. You see, you're, you're, you're definitely a man with a plan. You decided, having left British FA football, you know, that it's, you're not going to be thrown out, you're not going to be fat and be told to retire. You wanted to leave at the right time and come over here and do your apprenticeship out of the glare of... That was the idea. I mean, I, I wanted to leave playing in the Premiership and, 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 not, smart man. and not carry on playing. So I thought I'd come in to do an apprenticeship in Sligo. Um, it's been interesting. It's been very interesting. Um, Harder than I thought at times, but um, it's been. An Why Sligo? Why did you pick the Rovers? They phoned me up out of the blue. I was without a job, and they said, "Would you fancy coming over to Sligo?" And I said, um, "I would be interested if I knew where it was." So I had to get a map out, and I, I flew over one. Had you heard it. of the place? <laughs> I must admit, I hadn't. No, I hadn't heard of it. So um, complete ignorance. Never Everybody, that, like, every, never heard of Sligo. <laughs> Everybody in Sligo runs um, yeah. rubs me up about it as well. But I hadn't. But I came over. They were enthusiastic. They've got a full-time setup there, which is we've got 12 full-time players. Yeah, which is kind of unique, really, for the League of Ireland because it's a part-time league. So I said, yeah, I'd give it a go. Come over and see, see how I did, see if I enjoyed it, see if I could do it. Now you've definitely sent out a very, very clear signal to the football community and to your colleagues. And you know, I'm here. Guys are going to work me butt off, but I'm not here forever. No, they know that. I signed for two seasons. I came here. I said I want to do well um, and get away. It's, as I say, it's an apprenticeship, it's a stepping stone back. But that's the same for the players that are The start was a bit shaky, though, wasn't it? We lost Five our first down. six. It was. For six? We lost our first six games under me, and I thought, um, is this the right thing to be doing? But um, we turned it round, but um, yeah. then the deluge hit us when the rain started. It, it rains a lot in Sligo. Mm -hmm. And um, after we came back after the rain, we were a different team. And Does that not drive you around the bend? I think I read where you had 17 days rain on the trot. You've got. I'm, I'm correct me if I'm wrong. The first, the only full-time, you know, t team in the league, really. The Which only is worse, yeah, because you've got to train them every day. Yeah. And you haven't got the facilities or the weather. There was, it was rumoured that people were actually building an ark on top of Ben Bulbin when it was raining. We didn't play for five weeks, and it rained like mad up there. I've gone rusty since I've been up in Sligo. Yeah, of course. Um, there, there are probably a couple wondering now at the moment how good was he. Well, the high point of your career must have been that goal against Liverpool. The infamous right. goal. Right. Do you want to introduce it for us? Um. If you've got it, I think it's Dennis Wise taking a free kick in 1988. Very hot day at Wembley. And the rest is history. And let's have a look. Wise curling it in. And Sanchez has done it! Larry Sanchez doesn't Alan score Alan said to me after the game, he said, you had a really bad celebration. He said, I'd worked out my celebration the night before the game. I've turned around, Dennis Wise has jumped on. It's all my photographs. I've got Dennis Wise in front of me. Bruce Cobber in goal there. I never said what anything. What does that feel like? Because that won the match. Um, all I remember of it is I was pleased to score the goal, and the longer the game went on, I thought, well, let's hope nobody else scores a goal, because I don't want to be sharing it with anybody. Yeah, can, you, can you admit that, that you can yeah, be that I admit, greedy? I admit that. I mean, you're a team player. We, with it. We, the, the changing point was um, Dave Bessett, who was my best mate, obviously yeah. saved the penalty, I think, which was the first penalty saved at Wembley. And that's what most people remember about that game. In fact, when people ask me, I say that Dave scored the penalty, as, scored the, um, the goal as well because he gets so much credit for both of them. But um, it, it was a tremendous experience, I mean, it, to beat that Liverpool time at the time. Are you, are you married? I am married, yes. I'm, yeah. I'm living apart from the wife, in the nicest possible sense, of course. Yeah, I, I know that's uh, you have to be very careful yeah, in this you, country how you, how how you, you phrase something how you like phrase that. that. Now, she is, as we say in the Catholic Church, with child. Yes, yes, I'm due this... When's she due? May the 31st. And how are you getting away with that over here? And she's it's, over there. It's very, very difficult. Um, but professional footballers always tell you they get married and they have children in the summer, so it doesn't get in the way of the football. <laughs> it's a fact of life. That's a very interesting version of the rhythm method. Very, it's, very it's, interesting. You have to work hard at it. You have yeah. to work hard at it. Um, what, what kind of contact do you keep up? Because it is a relationship, obviously, that you still cherish, I think. Yes. Yeah, we've only been married two years. Seems so. to be going quite well. <laughs> and, and it is a distance. You know, you've got literally almost two countries between you. Yeah, she's got a very good job back in England. She's a lecturer. Um, so she's her students are reliant on her, so she just can't get up sticks and come over to here. We try and commute. I commute every other week, couple of weeks, and she comes over when she can, at Christmas and such like. It's worked so far. It'd be nice to get back and see her in the summer, though. Do you ring her every night? It's not quite that bad. We're not quite that bad. 
and we do every other night. Now, um, Sligo, it's, a, it's an expanding community nowadays, you know. It's Lovely it's, place, it's, it's, beautiful it's, place. It's, in fact, it's got a big suburban population now as well. Yeah. Uh, but they're kind of closed, you know, they're the fanatical football fans, absolutely fanatical. How have they taken to you? They've been very good. They had a tremendous season last season. This outsider with his lat Latin Yeah, looks. the one good thing is when I phone anybody in Sligo, and I, my first yeah. word, they say, oh, it's Laurie. I said, well, how do you know? He said, well, you're the only London accent in Sligo. So they've been very good to me. I mean, as I say, we had 7,000 people come out and see us play against Bruges. We had a semi-final up there and we had 7,000 people. And I think it's without doubt the best supported team in the League of Ireland. And they love their football. It's a football community. And that's another reason I came to that part of the world. Well, I, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the season and be good to yourself.